All right, guys, let's talk about running economy. What is it? How do you improve it? Why is it important? Let's get into it. So I'm sure most of you have heard the term running economy, uh, but maybe not know exactly what it means. So let's define running economy. Essentially, a running economy refers to how much oxygen you use to run at a specific pace, okay? So essentially, it's exactly the same as we would uh, you know, talk about the economy of a car. Um, how many miles does it get to the gallon? Is what they say in the United States. Here in Europe, we might talk about it as how many kilometers uh, to the liter. So essentially, how much fuel does the car use to travel a certain distance? And it's exactly the same with humans. How much fuel do we use to go a certain distance? We could express this as oxygen consumption, total oxygen consumption for one kilometer of running. Or we could talk about it as uh, how much oxygen is consumed per minute at a certain pace. So why oxygen, you may ask? Why is that important, how much oxygen we use? Well, we use oxygen as a measure of work intensity. So we have a certain maximum amount of oxygen that we're able to use to produce mechanical work in the muscles. And this is usually referred to as VO2 max. It's the maximum amount of oxygen that we're able to use per minute per kilo body weight measured in milliliters. So VO2 max or V.O2 max usually then refers to how many milliliters of oxygen can you, can you use per kilo body weight per minute? So it's maybe for a very uh, high level athlete, it might be like 80 milliliters or something. Whereas for a normal person, like for me, maybe it's around 55 or something like that, right? And we're working to improve, improve that capacity. But that's the capacity. Running economy, on the other hand, is essentially then how much you spend running at a, at a given pace. So as an example, you might have two runners, one of which has a VO2 max of say 80, the other one has a VO2 max of say 70, but despite their difference in maximal capacity for oxygen consumption, they're able to actually run pretty much the same times at different race distances. How is this possible? Why isn't the person with the higher VO2 max faster than the person with the lower VO2 max? Well, in this case, if this is the case, if they both have a similar, say, marathon time, then the reason is because the person with the lower VO2 max is more economical than the person at higher VO2 max, okay? So essentially, the person with the lower VO2 max is able to use that oxygen that they have available to them more efficiently than the person with the higher VO2 max, okay? Which is not always the case. It tends to be a, a trend that the higher the VO2 max, the lower the economy actually, but this is not necessarily uh, connected. So you can have a fairly high VO2 max and also be very economical, or you can have a low VO2 max and be very uneconomical, either one. Um, but of course, ideally you want as high as possible of a VO2 max, your capacity for oxygen consumption, and as high as possible running economy, which is essentially how much oxygen do you use to run a kilometer, for example, or a certain pace. The way it's measured is just in a lab, uh, you would run, you know, at different paces, say you have like, you run a certain pace, and then after five minutes, you increase the pace and increase, 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 uh, and you go all the way up to your max capacity or VO2 max, and you'll get the, you get a curve. Um, as you increase the pace, you consume more oxygen. But at any given pace, different runners might consume more or less oxygen, which reflects their running economy. Now, how do you improve it? Well, I like to sort of think of things as extremes in order to understand them properly. So if you imagine that I'm out running, right? And while I'm running, I'm doing this. And I'm lifting my legs really high and I'm just like running with really weird form, just jumping around while I'm running. Do you think that's gonna make me breathe harder? Is that gonna make me use more oxygen? Is that gonna be harder for me at any given speed than if I was running normally? Of course it would. I would waste energy with doing this with my arms. So 
my economy would in this, this case go down because I'm wasting so much energy doing these other things. I'm going the same speed as someone next to me, but he is running much more economical because he's not wasting that energy. Well, it's kind of the same thing. If you're running with good form, if you're running mechanically efficient, not wasting any energy, all the movements that you're doing are moving you forward rather than up and down, vertical oscillation is that what it's known as, or uh, making you know, movement that are uh, that is unnecessary. Sometimes I see people that are lifting their legs very much or that you know, they're overstriding or they're just doing weird sort of movements and it sort of looks like you know, they're probably wasting energy, although there's not always a visual connection. Sometimes people look like they're not really economical, but they actually are and vice versa. So how to improve it? Well, you have to improve your running mechanics, essentially. So the best way typically to improve your running economy is actually to do speed training. And when I say speed training, I mean faster than your VO2 max pace. I mean, it's essentially almost a sprint. It's not an all out sprint, but almost a sprint, maybe like your 1500 meter pace, a mile race pace, uh, this kind of pace, maybe even as fast as 800 meter pace. This kind of pace is when you're really running fast, you are teaching your body to run efficiently because when you're at a really high speed, um, it's, more, it's, it's easier to run with good form or it's more important to run with good form. So you're sort of forcing yourself into a situation where, with good form and you're also having to you know, really explode and produce a lot of force in each step. So it's, it's essentially like economy training. You're training your running economy by doing this. Now, in between these reps, which just maybe last 20 seconds, 30 seconds, maybe as much as a minute, in between those intervals, you would do you know, a long break, like a two, three minute break to really recover because you don't want to run with poor form. The whole purpose is to run with good form. So you've got to be fully recovered. Uh, the, it's not a cardiovascular stimulus as such. So that's one way to improve your running economy, doing these fast reps. Another way to do it is just to run a lot. Uh, actually, you should do all of these strategies at the same time, really. Running a lot, high mileage, getting in that volume, just lots of easy running, it helps you learn to run, essentially. The more you do something, the better you get at it. So the more you're out there running, the better you will get at moving efficiently and not wasting energy and your running economy will go up. And it's usually quite pace specific and terrain specific. So someone really efficient or economical rather on the roads might not be as good when they're on the trails because they're not used to that movement pattern. So you'll have to train specific. You know, you, you can get really economical on the hills if you do a lot of hills. But if you're not doing any flat running, only hill running, and you're suddenly doing a flat marathon, chances are you're not going to be that economical on the flats. So you've got to train specific. And over time, over the years, you will continue to improve your own economy. In fact, running economy is one of those factors that we are most able to affect over very long periods of time. People continue to improve in running economy for years and even decades, I've heard. Uh, so it's certainly something to focus on rather than VO2 max, which is a little bit more difficult to improve, certainly possible, uh, but it takes, uh, it's not as easy and there seem to be like a genetic ceiling, so to speak, of running uh, VO2 max, but your running economy can, can, can continue to improve. So even if you do have a fairly low VO2 max, if you get more economical, you're able to essentially use that oxygen better. It's almost like the VO2 max gives you an allowance of, of oxygen. You have this much oxygen and you can use it for whatever you want, right? And if you waste any of that oxygen by doing this when you're out running, <laughs> uh, you're gonna be, not be able to run as fast. But if you save that energy and put it into moving forward instead by having an efficient stride, you will run faster for that same amount of oxygen compared to someone who's wasteful. The last way to improve your running economy that's well known and well researched is um, heavy resistance training and or plyometrics. So plyometrics is when you're like jumping, like jump rope or box jumping, that sort of thing. Uh, and heavy weight lifting is, is when you're lifting weights, like a deadlift or squat maybe. Uh, and we're talking like three to five reps, that, that low rep, high intensity sort of range. And the reason is because it stiffens up your tendons and your muscles. And a stiff tendon is more economical 
than a less stiff tendon. So if you want to check out my video on that, I'll put a link to it here where I talk about those, uh, those flexibility things. So there you have it, running economy, your oxygen consumption per kilometer or per mile, or perhaps your oxygen consumption at a given pace or speed. As you train more and cover more miles, you get better at running and moving more efficiently, which makes you more economical. If you throw in some high speed, high rep training there, like 200 meter reps, 400 meter reps at 1500 to 800 meter uh, race pace, that's a good stimulus for improving your running economy as well. And of course, that resistance training in the gym, perhaps some plyometrics, those are also great to add in there. So that's it guys, quick little primer on running economy there. Leave any comments or questions down in the comments section and let me know how your training is going. Are you incorporating any of these strategies that I mentioned? The repetition training, the high mileage, maybe going to the gym. How's it working out for you? No pun intended. Hope you're having a great day. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. Check out some of my other videos on similar topics and have an awesome day. See you around.